Well, good evening. I'd like to uh, call, the, call the meeting to order. Uh, the Richmond Board of Education acknowledges and thanks the First Peoples of the Hunkamiam Language Group on whose traditional and ceded territories that we, we each learn and, and live. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody to the first official meeting of the board of, of the new board. Newly elected, elected board. and um, I'd also like to mention that, that Trustee Beliza is joining us on Zoom tonight. So I try Trustee Beliza. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Recognition uh, of the visitors, and we have uh, Moran Tannen from the Rich News, and we have our. our uh, Richmond Tea Association President, President uh, Bavar Stock. Thank you for joining us. And announcements from trustees. Announcements? Is, uh, yes. Thank you, Chairperson Tabotny. Um, briefs regarding the 2023 2024 annual budget will, will be accepted without, without prior notice at the Jan January 25th, 2023 regular, regular meeting of the board. As well as at the 20 uh, February 2022, uh, 20, sorry, February 22nd, 2023, March 29th, 2023, and April 26th, 2023, regular meetings of the board. Please note that, that budget uh, update dates will be available on, on the district budget website. All budget feedback will be considered by the board as part of the, the budget process, which, which is antedated. To, to be completed by May, May 24th, 2023. Thank you. Trustee Sarge, do you have a... I do, thank you. As we approach, approach the winter, the Board of, Board of Education wishes to extend its warmest wishes to students, families, and staff for a peaceful and joyous winter holiday season. We are, we are all fortunate to live in a, in a part of the world where we are free to celebrate what is most important to us, regardless of our religious faith or spiritual beliefs. It's what makes us diverse and strong as a school, school district, a community, and a nation. Thank you. And, and uh, I'm going to move to uh, Secretary Treasurer uh, Wang and, and uh, ask if there's any, any materials not included in the packet is available to, to public and also ask to explain uh, about our Zoom procedures. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, just a reminder that this is a reminder for the for the public uh, joining us this evening. We'll have two uh, question periods at which time we'll be reading out questions we received uh, in the uh, board meeting in count. If you haven't submitted your questions, uh, please feel free, free, uh, free to do so to board meetings at the 38.ec.ca. And also, also for the public jo joining us this evening via the Zoom, uh, you will be able to watch and listen to the meetings, uh, but will not be able to speak or chat during the meeting. Uh, if you have any, have any questions, again, please, please send to the board meetings at, at, at 38.bcca. And uh, end of this meeting, we'll be uh, making available recording of the meeting on the, the district's website. So that's the on online protocol that I'm going to, uh, I announce. So all the uh, meeting materials, they have been included in the meeting package and they have been posted, posted on the site. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Uh, so oh, I'm looking to adopt the agenda. Is there anything thing that trustees want to add to the agenda? Uh, you're, you're, you're moving the motion to adopt the agenda. Thank you, Trustee Wong and Trustee Lars. And um, I'm gonna call all the votes in, in favor and seeing none opposed, the motion's carried. Thank you. Okay, um, there are no presentations, special recognitions or briefs at this moment. Uh, there. Our questions from the public, uh, 
And we may have questions from uh, President Bastog. So welcome. Hi, uh, good, e good evening. This is Barbara Stock, President of Richmond Te Teachers Association. And, and uh, I start by offering my congratulations on your, on your recent election to the, the Board of Education. And I know that uh, there's been much learning uh, happening over, over the last uh, probably six weeks or two months, um, as some of you are new to your roles. And of course, uh, those of you who are continuing on in your roles, you know that you know, it's always about learning, learning and education. So, so, so I, I have a couple questions tonight. Um, and, and I think first question is, is probably one that is a, hopefully a little bit easier to, to uh, answer. And then in the same question, I, I probably will be leaving you to think about um, in, in reflection uh, in terms of what you're reviewing tonight um, as far as the agenda. So my first question is actually with regards to the board budget process. Um, though I'm I'm maybe looking right now towards towards or at the 2022-2023 school year, and my question is about what is the board the board or what has the board done um, this fall to advocate for inflation adjustments for the current budget. Um, and can the Board of Education anticipate any government announced to address the additional pressures created by an education budget that did not include any inflation adjustments? That's my first topic. Okay. Um, the budget uh, process, what's the, what's the board done this fall? I, I think, you know, all will Fall was really election and um, related items. So uh, you know, you know, at this point, um, we haven't undertaken, but but any any advocacy at that point, uh, we did put put for motion to BCSTTA, um, and I can have that motion um, um, provide for you. Uh, actually, trust trust Larson did, and when was that? That was October. Sorry, just at the last. Um, this last last one. Uh, yeah. Let me do. Okay. I, uh, yeah. Go ahead and speak to it. Passed. Um, we asked that the PCSTA urge the government to look into the inflationary situation. It passed a hundred percent with all districts behind it. We'll, we'll get the, the ball rolling. Okay. okay. And this board does plan some advocacy. Uh, I think we've been talking about meeting with our, our MLAs and our MPPs. So um, advocacy is anticipated for this board, of course. Yeah. And uh, there's a second question. It was, is, do we anticipate? No, I haven't. Well, I haven't really gotten into my second can talk, but I think that that, that answers the first question. Okay. So my second question really relates to the quarterly reports on the strategic plan, and and as as I'm reviewing those reports, I'm I've, I've been looking at uh, um, some of the governance um, and the guide to effective strategic planning, reporting for continuous improvement, the governance for further continuous improvement of student learning, and just trying to figure out how all of this actually works together in terms of your role um, in, as trustees on the Board of Education. So when I read the documents, it's very clear that the Board of Education will participate in continuous review um, of programs, including, and, and one that stands, stands out to me and, and does relate to tonight, uh, re reviewing the element of the school, school district strategic plan and the results of ed educational outcomes for the school district to address student outcome deficiencies and inequities. And tonight's report is about uh, inspired learners, equity, and inclusion. And what is really re resonating for educators and teachers um, in Richmond and across, across the province is what we're experiencing each and every day. day. And this is the chronic staff shortages. 
Um, and specifically what is happening in schools is the redeployment of non-enrolling uh, teachers, including English language teachers, learning assistants, learning resource teachers, and the impact that this has on, on student outcomes and spe specifically in alignment with continuous improvement. So I'm wondering is, as we move through, through is how is data going to be collected? How will it be reported? And what is the Board of Education doing to raise attention to staffing shortages and the impact on continuous improvement on student educational outcomes? And these are big questions, but where is the plan to address uh, teacher shortages? There seems, seems to be a government plan to address doctor shortages and nursing shortages, but there has been no announcement to, to address teacher shortages. Yes, we have a new collective agreement, but, but that does not, not um, mean that we're suddenly going to, going to have new teachers um, come into the system, and that's what we need. So... What, what I ask is, and, and this has been further their advocacy that we'll deal do that we would ask for you is, why aren't there more sources being created for teacher education programs? Why are plans and support teacher work workload and implementation of change, such as things like implementation days for assessment, reporting, and, and other ministry initiatives? Where is the plan to ensure special teachers can do the work for hired to, to do? How to retain teachers in specialist positions if they're not do their work, their work to support students. With, without the focus um, by all levels on staff, staffing, what, what I'm dealing with is how do we actually have a focus on continuous improvement if we're not, not getting at heart of the things that are happening each and every, each and every day in schools? So I know this is this is a series of questions. One might consider them big ideas that I want resonate through your brain as you listen to updates tonight, um, because this is part of our our role um, within, within the context of continuous improvement and and specifically uh, your role. A positive no no that sounds like it's pretty negative. Um, it's fall has been tough, and I would say it has been a tougher year than ever. But on a positive note, when I look at this tonight, there is some really key things that, that you um, that I can celebrate. And one of those things um, is is regards to inspired learners, equity and inclusion, and that, that includes um, the implementation plan and for Indigenous focus graduation requirement course. Um, and th this plan um, was dipped with they gave, gave lots of uh, energy um, and feedback and I think together um, is a good plan. I think the board will have to think think about this and as you are going through the budget setting process because this this will support both for this year and for next year. Other thing I think to look at on this agenda to celebrate is the the board authority authorized course for board approved uh, for African and Black Canadian study studies. And I I like to always draw draw attention to the work of educators. Because that is what, what happens behind this. this. This does not happen when well, Richmond teachers. It is the passion of uh, uh, teachers. It is the time. It is their energy to develop the, this curriculum. <laughs> and so I do encourage you uh, to, to on their work and to make sure that this passes tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Very much for, for your questions. I don't know that all of them be answered tonight, tonight but um, I know that trust trustees uh, are very concerned about the shortages and that, that is a cross wide issue um, affect, affect almost every district. And, and uh, it is extreme concern. And you're right. Uh, we need to teachers to develop these, these courses, we need teachers. And uh, in our specialty, you know, practice and and um, and to uh, carry carry out um, our strategic plan and all the goals and objectives. 
and 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 so we will uh, be advocating. I think this board has just started to undertake its gets work, but uh, yeah, uh, stay stay posted. <laughs> we will be um, for sure addressing those 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 in the near future. So, thank you, thank you very much for, for your question. Trust Trustee Larson. Could you just could you send us this list of questions? Yes. I tried to write them down and I wasn't fast enough. And yes. I would like to just read them and understand them a little bit better. So if you could do, do that, it would be. Um, yeah. Trustee Sargent. Thank you. Um, thank you for all those highlights. And I'm just wondering, we could in the, the thought, thinking as a board, uh, um, we, you know, you know, meet our MLAs and MPs. Coming up in the in the new year, we're going to schedule that pretty, pretty quickly. Um, we haven't done that with our stakeholders for a while, and I and I think um, you know, you spoke so eloquently, and you're the you're on the ground round well, along with along with our staff. But I think it would it would be good to consider maybe that meeting being with our, our stakeholders. Thank you. Yes, I would think that would be, would be uh, very important. So, um, said, stay tuned. We will be. Uh, scheduling something soon. Thank you, and I will uh, uh, emails on. Thank you. Thank you. It would be be good the list because it was quite. It was a good list. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, yeah. So the chairperson, there is one, is one question that's appeared appeared in the, the school district email email. It's with, with respect to the authorized core course African and Black Black Canadian study, which is on the agenda for consideration tonight. Um, so the person who had written in is a uh, gentleman by the name of Tom Leo. Tom Leo. Uh, he is indicating that he is a rich Richmond parent. Uh, he is wanting to make clear that it's not a question so much as a comment for the board's consideration. And I have have shared the email email uh, the prior email with with all the trustees. Um, uh, he wants to, be, wants to be clear. I think he supports the, the notion of students learning about different cultures. Or, uh, he does not support the concept of highly, highlighting a particular group. Um, and, and what his suggestion would be, be that perhaps the top 10 majority ethnic groups be, be identified in that about rather than, rather than uh, in his view, single linked uh, uh, a civic group. So I have very much summarized uh, the uh, email that he sent, and trustees do have that in its entirety. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, we'll move on to, to uh, the executive report, uh, so Superintendent Robinson. Great. Thank you. So as always, uh, st staff in the district have been extremely busy uh, doing amazing things, things in class, and it's always my pleasure, pleasure to be able to share some of the things that are that are going on. As always, as a very small sampling of the, the thing going on in our hundred, hundreds of class, but some uh, great things nonetheless. So uh, the first thing that I wanted to share is actually uh, regarding the happy holidays that is being sent out to our partner group to uh, employees across the school school district and um, to, uh, for um, our community partners and we'll have an edge hopefully coming up relatively quickly so so students in Ms. Dates's kindergarten class at Anderson Anderson Entry School will recently yeah. ask to create a piece of art to be used for the district winter card that is sent out to all employees and community partners and students did just an amazing job uh, I, I was not able to to choose, choose one. I could not, could not choose one of the 20 uh, submissions were uh, given to me. And so in the end, uh, uh, what we ended up doing was uh, forming a beautiful uh, winter gallery of 20 piece, pieces of student art. And, and uh, you'll get a chance, chance to see that shortly. And I really want to give special thanks to, to our and teacher, Laura Dates, and the students of Division 13 for their uh, for beautiful artwork. Our work. And hopefully we can go back to that. There we go. There it is. So you'll see in just a moment, uh, there are 19 or two different image images of a beautiful project they, they, of a car cardinal in the snow. And I, I thought that was just uh, beautiful, beautiful, love. So fundraising for chair, 26 students, and all from Anderson, Elson, Elson. And this is their French immersion, immersion class. is $1,250 for the West Coast Kids Counselor Foundation by hosting a pajama day and craft fair. So the students worked in four team, teams uh, to host the event, event. And they really, from what I, what I understand, an amazing job of working together to sell a variety of items, such as fairy doors. You can see those. Uh, dinosaur tour tales for pens, jewelry, and holiday items. Money raised will be supporting programming offered by the West Coast Kids Cancer Foundation and in particular food programs to support local fam families. And I'm always so proud of our, our, our staff when, when they do these amazing initiatives. 
Uh, snow recently fell, fell in Richmond. Many of our staff, staff and students engaged in learning inside and outside of the classroom. On the school grounds, students at elementary schools work together to create and build snow sculptures. At Brit Bridge, Bridge, students created a magical winter wonderland inside their classrooms room by the room with decorations, crafts, and very art projects. Students from Thompson Elementary recently made the top 10 for, for entry vocals. That's, that's grade six in the nationwide 2020 Classic Music Class Challenge. The Canadian Music Class Challenge is CBC Music Music way of showing its work for Music edu Education Canada. Ever, it gathers, gathers the finest musical talent and performances from, from schools across the country, and Thompson was shortlisted this year. So Literus is performed by student choir at, at Thompson Entry. It's a beautiful little song of hope, gratitude, peace that was performed at the school's Remembrance Day Assembly this year. Saying that, 
Uh, in December, to celebrate winter season, many school in Richmond held, held annual winter con concerts. Uh, over 200 talented students, students formed at Richmond Secondary School Concert. So concert band, their jazz band, and their vocal jazz, jazz groups played a variety of standards, pop, pop and hot songs. Hugh Boyd uh, uh, Winter Concert also featured a wide variety of music with some holiday favorites being performed by students in the guitar ensemble, drummers, jazz, jazz band, and concert band. And it's a really nice, nice sort of overview of the music programming that goes on and on in our schools. It's the district. Really lovely to hear and see. Deck the halls at Mitchell Entry. Uh, uh, staff, students, and fa families recently took part, part in Mitchell Entry's annual Deck the Halls competition. Classes can compete either, either on their own, own in, or in collaboration with their hallway neighbors to make their bulletin boards festive and bright. Right. Some chose to go with a theme, such as how, how the Grinch Christmas, a, a winter one, and among, among and gingerbread lane, while others chose to, to make interactive displays, such as the Elfie Elf and School Globe. Every year, the competition in the hall holiday day spirit exponentially. At McRoberts, uh, in, uh, in their library learning commons, they, they recently welcomed staff and the kindergarten French immersion students Whiteside Elementary School for, for Une Heure de Fête. The grade eight French, French immersion students chose stories from a selection of, of winter themed French books and prepared some sim simple literacy activities to, to help guide their students standing of their young buddies. Students rotated through two missions, half, half of that story time and the other half engaged in a process art activity, choosing from a variety of materials to create winter scenes. Each buddy there was also, also invited to take a short vi video of front of, the, uh, sorry, in the front of an Avery's green screen. And then a grade eight student then used the videos to build a happy holiday snow, snow gift for, for each student. This event provided an, an authentic language experience for our youngest French immersion learners and students were able to build community unity ex grades and schools, which I thought was just a wonderful way to celebrate the winter season. And finally, holiday hope hope campaign uh, at Palmer Palmer Secondary, the school's holiday campaign to encourage students to bring, to bring collect items to schools to support the Richmond Food Food Bank recently took to recently took place. Ice. Students brought items that related to the, the, the day's theme, including putting books, toys, package, package foods, canned good, goods, and donations. And at the end of the campaign, students made a sig significant mission uh, of needed items for the Richmond community. C congratulations to the Palmer students, students, beautiful and initiative and the impact that uh, uh, well they'll have on our, our families and our community. You know, and as I said at the beginning of this presentation, this is just a highlight of the things that are going on in our schools right now. This season in particular, our kids are going out and showing how much they care about their community. Um, and it certainly makes me yeah, very proud to be a part of this school district. So, uh, Chair, Chair, just before I wrap up, I want to say as we approach the winter break, I think I think it's important that we take a moment to acknowledge the work of our staff across the school district. Um, I, um, I had joy of being able to return to visiting schools this past term. And I have to say, I have been so, so impressed consistently with the work of support staff, our teachers, and our leadership staff to uh, support our kids' families. It's, our work in public education continues to be changing for many reasons, and we heard about that tonight. And I have to say, despite that, the great, great majority of our staff work through these challenges and come, and come to work every single day with the goal of doing what's, what's best for kids and families. And they are truly inspiring. And I'm grateful to work along, alongside so amazing people in the, in the school district. I just wanted, just wanted to tell you that. So I'll wrap up my report there. Thank you. Thank you. And I believe, you know, probably Trace were able, were able to attend winter uh, concerts and, and events um, as I did it. And it's just a joy to go back into schools and experience it once again, because uh, we missed it so much during the, even mentioned in that period of period now. Um, so hopefully we move on to a time of uh, healing and renewal. Right which would be wonderful. So thank you very, very much. And it's just such a such a to hear kids singing. They haven't stopped after all, all this time. So thank you. Uh, um, do trustees have any, have any questions? Robinson. Okay. Uh, approval of the minute. So there's a, re a record of the summer meeting of the board held Wednesday, October 12th. Uh, 2022, and also a record of an in-camera 
Can a special meeting of the board help Wednesday, November 30th, 2022? And uh, for approval, there are minutes from a regular me meeting of the board held Wednesday, October 12th, 2022. And looking for a mover and seconder for those uh, uh, trustee Larson and, and trust sergeant. And, and any discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor? None opposed. Motion's carried. And on, uh, there are also so, uh, the inaugural meeting of the board uh, minutes held Wednesday, November 9th for approval. I'm looking for action for, for um, Trustee Hamaguchi and Trustee uh, Wong. And any discussion? All those in favor? In favor? Opposed? Thank you. Motion's carried. Okay, so um, we have our business arising section. And there is um, a recommendation, the annual budget pro pros and timeline. And um, so to treasure Wang, do you want to speak to this first? first? Uh, sure. Uh, thank you, Q Chairperson. I will speak very briefly about, about this report. So my report, trustees, is on page 18, 18 20 of the board meeting package. In this report, uh, the pr proposed 23-2024 new budget process and timeline are similar to, to what was used, used in previous years. Uh, this process says is to, uh, to run from January to April with the plan and to finalize the budget, the budget by May. I propose the time, time in, and process is to ensure the board and the district has sufficient time and uh, be, be able to take opportunity to, to, to engage with uh, the community and seek in feedback and input from our stakeholders and the community through the process. Um, so therefore, the recommendation is to approve the budget process and, and timeline um, for the 23-2024 new budget, and the recommendation is listed on the top of uh, page 880. Thank you, Chair Chairperson. So I'll quickly read that recommendation. The Board of Education approved 23-24 uh, annual budget process and timeline as presented, and further that the board directs staff to post the budget process and, and timeline on the district's website, and I'm looking for a mover. Uh, trustee Yang, uh, second, seconder, trustee sergeant. Um, is there any discussion on the budget process? Uh, trustee Hamaguchi. Um, um, Secretary Wang, um, is this the, the same basic dates, dates last? Is the timeline changed at all? Uh, uh, correct. It's very similar to last year. Last year's okay. Okay. Thanks. Right. Uh, trustee sergeant. I just wanted to thank the Secretary Treasurer. I know it's been a process that developed over a number of years, um, but I'm very proud of the process we have, especially in engaging with our public and our stakeholders in a, in a real meaningful way. It's not just, just being on the website. It's actually having a budget advisory committee, um, and, and that helps look at everything, everything, our staff look at everything. So I just wanted to say thank, thank you very much for making all that happen. And, uh, you know, we do have, have a process for receiving, receiving look input and feedback and, and um, you know, I, I, I think all these things and uh, especially our uh, um, advisory group and, and that helps, helps us make wise decisions. So um, we thank you for that. And we hope uh, um, our public and our stakeholders will take, will be involved with the process. Once again, as they have before. So, so um, I don't think I called the question. So I'm going to call the question. If, if there aren't any comments, all those in favor of the, of the motion and, and opposed. So thank you very much. That is approved. We have a budget process and timeline. Uh, next on, on our agenda is a strategic Plan quarterly update and our strategic, strategic priority one and two. And that will be a report from the deputy superintendent. Uh, 
Mr. Ryan and, and Assistant Superintendent Sprodigan, Mc, McMillan and Granger. <laughs> uh, folks, just before we get started, just a reminder that we do have five uh, listing online, and if you could mention sure the mic is relatively close to your speaking, those mics don't pick up as easily as the one our desk do. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Um, we have talked quite a bit, a bit about the strategic plan, and we do do believe it's a really, really, really important to talk about the strategic plan. We've had conversations with folks in schools who also said that it's very, really help, helpful for them to constantly be, be apprised of what, what's happening with the strategic plan. So I'll just just talk to all about the steps in front of you, you know, which and just give you a bit of an overview. And then my colleagues will, will sort of dot some of the examples. But inspired learners, priority one, it's really it it, it consists of four goals containing a significant number of objectives, and the vast majority of those have been uh, initiated last year. And many of the goals, goals and objectives are multi-year ones, and so we're going to continue to unfold over the years. Here's ahead. Yep, the updates that we're going to share today they don't refer specifically to every key action or objective, but but provide highlights and hopefully give you a good sense of each goal, the objectives within the goal, as well, as well as some examples of key key actions they're working on. on. Broadly, though, it's important to know that in priority one, there are many intertwined educational elements that contribute to the development of inspired learners. And you can see the illustrated up there. Uh, for example, we've got the, the core competencies, which are up at the top, and there's this, the C for communication, uh, the T for, for thinking, and the PS yes, for personal and social competency. And those are the umbrellas that, that really arch the, the, the B curriculum, uh, and the curriculum content gets folded in underneath and will woven into all of those. Um, we also have assessment and reporting, which of course, course Assessment not only gets instruction, but in, but informs the pathway along the way, and then makes uh, decisions about how how students are performing at the end of end of instruction and learning. It, it also has indigenous perspectives, which of course is is been into every everything we do, and it's a part of our being now now not just what we're teaching, but who we are as people in our community. And um, overarching all of that, that is uh, belief in and inclusion of all, uh, and we're we're focused on learner for all. So while we're, we're going to be sharing some examples, examples of the work that's been done so far this year that may, that may speak to an aspect of, of what in the slide, wherever possible, as I've tried, tried to illustrate, all of these things are working together uh, to inform, inform holistic way the work we do around inspired learners. Now I'll invite Assistant Superintendent McMillan to share more about, about Tool 1. Being that if I point in this direction, that this advances the slide, but I'm just going to check over my shoulder. That is actually true. <laughs> Perhaps things. Let's go to the next slide. Thank you. Uh, so speaking specifically goal one, that learners have an increased capacity to adapt and thrive in an ever-changing world. As you can see on this on the screen are the summary, some of the key we were the objectives that are, that are aligned with this goal. And they include a wide range, as you can see, see from the core competencies to global, global civil citizenry to, to inquiry to assessment. And actually I think almost everyone on the front here are going, going to speak to goal one specifically. Um, as you as you may aware, we are continuing, continuing to move towards a provincial, provincial reporter. And a highlight I wanted to share here, here is been in multiple year, years, pilots and exploration of formative of assessment and, and communicating processes and can continue to engage deeply in this work this year. Uh, guidelines for elementary and secondary reporting were shared with all schools in June and again, again in fall 22. 
2022 too. Ongoing professional learning opportunities have included many, many lunch and learn specifically at individual school sites led by the district administrator for curriculum and assessment as well as district staff and it's across different schools. A parent evening held on the new reporting guides in October and over 300 paired parents attended, which was really exciting to me. I'll also highlight, um, as referenced on this slide, environmental stewardship. This 24 source schools are receiving EcoWise grant funding this year, and we're pleased to have in place a place to a consultant as approved uh, this year area of science and sustainability to, to directly support these schools as well. And I'll now hand this over to Deputy Subi Superintendent. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent McMillan. So I want to sp speak specifically about Goal 101, Objective 3, design and offer a variety of learning options to meet the of all diverse needs needs of our learner and specifically establish an implement impl a plan to grow and develop international education as everyone in uh, as part of this meeting today will really be aware there that there were significant impacts to international education as a result of the pandemic and the, the internal education department is working diligently to restore the department and so i just just want to say the director uh, Bridge Management International Ed, uh, Mr. Sean Septon, during a comprehensive update immediately following our presentation tonight. So I'll defer for most of my comments, but but other than to say that, that international education is moving very positive direction, as was reported out at the beginning of the year, yeah. in terms of, of the number of students that are re returning to us, and we're very, very encouraged that, and that we're great, grateful for the work of, of the international education team. With that. I'll pass it to. Thank you, Deputy Ryan. Uh, I just want to share two brief highlights still in relation to goal to golden objective three and four. Uh, uh, the first program options and another uh, continuing education, both are reviews. As all of you will know, the Richmond School District offers a variety of program options for students at both the elementary and secondary levels. They think early and late, late for immersion, Montessori, IB, incentive, and the, uh, the incentive outdoor academy. Staff are working with external service provider uh, to conduct a program op options view during the 2022-23 school year with the expectation of receiving a summary report by the fall of 2023. It's believed that a thoughtful and focused view of the district program options will provide the district with the opportunity to achieve a couple of things. First of all, first of all to yeah. identify and support key strengths, strengths of current program philosophies and designs, and then also to identify and address possible future needs, including gaps, also gaps in existing offering sourcing, staffing, facility requirements. Then with regards to continuing education, many will know that continuing ed is a, a department in the school district that has a wide, wide range of free and fee-paying learning programs for school age and adult learners throughout the calendar year, such as adult secondary, mandatory programs, educational assistance program, and summer, summer learning. District staff will also, also be working with in, in collaboration with an external service provider to, to, to review the program during 2023, 2022-2023 school year. And the broad aims sim similar to the first are, are identifying strengths and gaps in programming, delivering models, structures, and system, and to out outline a pathway forward for, for the department, including sustainability of programs, development and enrichment of program options to best meet the uh, best, best needs of our diverse community. That uh, I'll invite Assistant Superintendent Rodigam to provide an update on innovation inquiry. Thank you, Assistant Superintendent. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, the work that supports Party One Goal One to deepen and mm -hmm. support our ability to to reflect in goals related to curriculum core competence but piece is really illustrated uh, through our our innovation query grants. There are 112 uh, query grants that's in process this year in 11, 11 different focus areas. Um, um, and you see up on the screen the focus areas for, for our uh, inquiry grade grants under both Strategic Priority One and Two, Inspired by Learning and Equity and and Inclusion. Um, and we have focus areas areas this year based on feedback from last year. So, so the new uh, focus areas are in reconciliation, activating getting student voice, numer numer numeracy foundations, pillars of liter literacy, and outdoor learning and land pedagogy. Great teams meet multiple times a year uh, in a group group with the teacher lead to deep, deep inquiry and also works as a school team to focus on their inquiry question. 
district inquiry committee is focused on deepening inquiry practices and this in the district here has its own social inquiry, which is how are the inquiry grant structures building in a culture of collaborative inquiry in our district to gather feedback back of how and what haters are learning, learning as a result of their inquiry projects. And in order to support the process of school setting and pray focus for their schools with outcomes that are specific, meaningful, measurable, and, and evidence informed, Principal, principals and principals meet, meet several times a year to learn more about inquiry, uh, uh, develop their school full focus, and ensure that they are gathering student voice and, and then their learning and acting in actions on their websites for the wider uh, uh, community to view and engage with. So that's uh, innovation and inquiry, and I'll pass it back to Assistant Superintendent McMillan. I learned how to, I think. <laughs> I think I'm uh, moving on to, to goal two, uh, as you can, can see the text on this on this on this slide, the objective encompasses healthy living variety of forms, from physical to mental health ports, opportunities to engage in the community, and deepening understanding of the core the core policies as learners learners explore who they are as thinkers and learners and communicators. In terms of district supports, uh, key actions this year are continue to provide support and provide learning opportunities in the area of, of physical and mental health. Another significant key action underway over the past year has been the development of the initial structures and implementation for Richmond Integrated Child and Youth Themes, which is a multi-stakeholder collaborative effort that, that underway. As, as part of the ministry's pathway to hope, this involves working with Vancouver Coastal Health, the Ministry of Education, other partner groups to develop a comprehensive cohesive structure for mental health supports for children and families in Richmond. Two districts, um, I see what clinical counselors, I saw, I mean, meaning integrated child and youth and youth members. Uh, two, I see clinical counselors, two district ICY peer support workers have been hired this, this fall. And our district partners, as Vancouver Coastal Health, are progress us with hiring additional members with hopes that very soon they will be able to, to uh, co coalesce and able to move forward with inflation support later this year. I also want to continue, I want to mention engaging families in this in this conversation and around mental health. And we're, we're looking to put more, more iteration meets this year for parents. One will, co will coincide um, absolutely in May as it did last year with Mental Health Week. Moving, moving on to the next slide. Uh, goal three speaks to ind Indigenous people's history, perspectives and learning approaches embedded within district plan and practices. And a significant amount of work has been going through these three objectives outlined in this particular goal area, from professional learning for educators and all staff across the district, around in reconciliation, to supportive resources to schools, and targeted professional learning sessions and equal support with teachers in their classrooms. An example would be the resource that were developed and shared in September to support school activities for the September 30th National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Secondary school teams this year have, have participated in a Mirrors and Winds professional learning series, looking at diversity in school resources and learning about guiding principles for select selection and what might be available purchase and to evaluate the, those they move forward. Additional materials continue to be prov provided in an ongoing way through the District Resource Centre. This and we'll talk more, more about this um, later on this evening. We're excited to be planning and providing educator support as we, as we prepare to, in, uh, to implement the Indigenous Focus Graduation Environment, which will, which will come into effect for the, for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, we're working concurrently on the plan with regard, regards to learning and reason resource reports, and we, we will be moving forward with that, that although in, begin until next year in terms of, of the course frames themselves on developing educator support and plan plans for implementation. As well I'll, as, I'll, as I'll close, I have completed the, the equity action scan process project that, that we've been involved in for the last couple of years, just at looking, looking at Indigenousness success. The report will be shared pub publicly January 18th, the edu Public Education Committee meeting, and we look forward upon on board approval to implementation of some of those re recommendations. Finally, in goal four, four, as foundations to the curriculum, the focus on literacy and numeracy are restricted significantly strategic plan in this area. 
work, work on last year, year in creating frameworks for both literacy and numeracy. And you can see on this slide, a little bit small, the pillars of literacy that have developed as well as, well as the, well, the early primary K-2 numeracy foundations. In terms of literacy, the primary framework has now been launched with teachers this fall. The K-7 framework is complete and will be more fully launched as the year go, goes on. Professional learning sessions on the, on the pillar of literacy have been, have been offered at each of our, our pro D sets this fall and will be offered throughout the year. Your consultants are providing individual and small work as an, as an professional learning, learning opportunities to support what implementation and deepen in practice and literacy instruction. I'll mention literacy bursts. This is a new tournament for us, uh, which are which are short focused professional learning learning opportunities, as well as the district's literacy YouTube channel are continuing to provide other other avenues of support for our educators. In terms of numeracy, beta two framework, as you as you said, is now complete and is being shared with our prime teachers with ongoing professional learning things for implementation. And the three to five framework is currently under development with a tentative complete date of spring 2023 and, and so on. We'll continue on and eventually we'll have K to 12, 12 for those areas. And finally, there's ongoing support uh, and, uh, and personal learning to, to deepen student staff understanding around digital literacy and work work will be is being on us a supportive framework for that as well. Then this one. Moving to priority two, goal one, that district learning environments are equitable and inclusive. There's a number of objectives within the this that speak, speak to support connection and belonging for students with dis disabilities and disabilities, as well as other potential vulnerabilities, <laughs> including children and youth in the care and care industry of children and infant development. Children and youth in care. This includes a focus of folks lens on their progress, attendance, and, and success at school including monthly reporting by each school, which is reviewed by district administrator student services. Again, again, ongoing professional learning provides opportunities for educators across roles to build understanding, strategies, and supports to address the best needs of learners with disabilities, diverse abilities. One example, in September uh, uh, this year, 195 ELL and learning resource teachers came together for a conference focused on developing effective education plans and associated implementation that supports the individualized needs of learners with disabilities and diverse abilities. And that national learning can, continues on throughout the year. Providing equitable and inclusive learning environments gives rise to a lot of opportunities for us to look at a number of structures and supports across all of the areas in our schools. We'll pass things over to Deputy Superintendent Ryan. Thank you again. I want to speak specifically about, about uh, the commitments to, to create, create, begin implementation of a plan based on, on distance inclusive edu education and alternate program reviews. So I have to update the board and the public on the status of those reviews. A great deal of work related to this object has been undertaken in the 2022 year, and I'll, I'll update you brief on two of those, the Aspen Learning Center and alternate, alternate programs. The Aspen Center, we're located at McNeil Secondary School, opened for the 2016-17 school year, year. And then the Learning Center was introduced as a specialized secondary program and attended to the needs of students with complex complexities requiring significant support. Placement at the program, a program at McNeil Secondary was originally planned to be temp temporary. And the review assesses all aspects of the program with the view to bring some of the district's vulnerable students with the best possible education to, to support their now and into the future. So the Aspen Learning Review Report will be publicly at the Education Committee meeting January 18th. And the report comes with a comprehensive range of recommendations for consideration and ultimately board approval early in, in the new year. Moving on to the review of alternate programs, which includes, includes combined studies, integrated academics, and station stretch, et cetera. The purpose of alternate pro program review is to assess and make recommendations regarding program philosophy, design, sustainability of the programs and locations, as well as current and future needs. And at this time, a draft report has, has been made by staff. The report will be shared, shared board in January. Education Committee public on February 15th. 
and the report will include a comprehensive range, range of recommendations for consideration and ultimately board affordable anticipated first quarter order of 2023. With, with, with that, I'll turn it over to Assistant Superintendent Rodigan. Thank you. Thank you. So the work within strategic priority to be two goals in equity and inclusion supports and expand expand our mission to ensure that all students, families, and staff feel welcome, are treated respectfully, and have a sense of belonging. The, the work that's subjective one, one of goal will support all, all learners to develop a sense of connection, belonging, and positive personal and cultural identity includes providing professional learning opportunities on an on, ongoing basis that, that are responsive to learn, learner needs. The fact that learning is an ongoing process is a major focus of strategic priority two. Professional learning opportunities are perpetually in development to meet the emergent and ongoing needs of staff. Examples include, include workshops about diversifying the homology holidays entitled, Is It Beginning, Beginning to Look a Lot Christmas? And books focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Another important action within this objective is to continue to conduct student focus groups. Districts are connecting team with schools to develop student focus groups regarding identity and belonging. Data collected from the focus groups last year is being analyzed as a source feedback for development of further student student focus this year. Table 38 met in November, 20, uh, November and we'll, we'll continue to explore options to increase the diversity of student voices this year, including a student student conference is in its early, early development series for the spring, spring of 2023. Uh, an additional action is to review the imagery in the district to ensure representation and show staff and student student success from various backgrounds, abilities, and identities. One way that is being enacted is that schools that are engaging in mural projects are supported in ensuring diversity in the theme of the mural. And you can see some examples on screen. Schools have also been invited to participate in map the ethnic diversity or community on the of the world for, for display school foyers and hallways. Um, goal two, uh, priority two, states the district actively addresses unconscious bias and privilege, systemic discrimination and marginalization act based, based on facts such as ability, color, cultural identity, gender, gender identity, indigeneity, political beliefs, race, race, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, and socioeconomic status. I know that is a long goal. However, I think it's important every time that we, we state all the uh, intentions of all, because it's really important for our work. Um, um, the summary of strategic priority to this evening describes the actions underway to actively address this. Object one is to identify and develop a plan, plan and respond to current district challenge related to systemic discrimination and marginalization. An external audit, as you know, is completed in November of 2021. And based on the, on the audit, the diversity and, and anti-racism working group Present its eight priorities to the Board of, Edu of Education uh, meeting in April 22 for approval. Approve. As a result, the Diversity, Equity, and, the, and Inclusion Advisory Committee was formed to further the recommendations within the priorities and is developing a work, work plan to address the fine, the fine of that audit. A recent example of this, this work is the development of a policy checklist to review and develop policy with an equity lens that was shared policy committee, committee earlier this week. In addition, the four subcommittees of SOGI advisory are establishing membership for this year to work on specific goals to develop strategic plans based on recommendations from SOGI advisory committee. And finally, the, the XGAN report will pre pre be presented to education committee in January. So some examples of how objective two, to enhance awareness and understanding of conscious bias and privilege and how they influence interactions through, throughout our learning, learning community and objective three, to support students and staff to develop a deeper understanding of the tree and Im impacts of systemic discrimination are, are being addressed, include, include the, uh, the provision of professional learning opportunities and resources which is uh, tailored to be responsible to learning needs of staff, staff and to provide a variety of perspectives. Learning is an ongoing journey and, it, and is aimed to provide staff with skills and resources in order to teach work and work with a diverse mindset. You can see on the slide just a hand, handful of learning opportunities from this fall for a variety of staff and student audiences. Student reps on the SOGI and DEI advisory committees are providing insights, student voice and leadership on these keys 
and focus group invitations are being formed in school with an eye to capture the voices of students who may feel marginalized or who don't typically contribute their voice to district conversations. Recommendations from the anti-racism audit, audit and X scan are being paid attention to through the DEI advisory right. committee to advise on the progress within the priorities that were developed at diversity and anti-racism working group. Some high highlights from the fourth objective to ensure students and staff, and staff have access to current, current and relevant resources reflect the diversity of and the challenges faced by our community and the world are to conduct diversity audits in elementary live of, of elementary library, library collection. We've spoken pre previously about the second secondary library audits, and this year elementary diversity audits are underway in 13 elementary school schools and to the eight elementary elementary schools that completed their audits this year. School book room collections are also being reviewed through the Mirrors and Windows project and book bundles on timely topics related to diversity, equity, and, and inclusion are also so purchased by the district and, and sent to all school libraries. Um, and in addition to providing professional learning opportunities, the September conference for teacher li librarians share focused on equity and inclusion and collection division development and highlighted the district learning resource policy on dedicated professional learning support for teacher li librarians supported by coordinator for library and inclusion services. And that, that brings us to the end of our early update for priority one and, and two. Um, and, and of course, we're happy to take any questions. Thank, thank you. This is the report. <laughs> it's like the one, one we had in 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 two it was amazing. So um really appreciate it. And uh, I'm sure trustees have some questions. So, uh trust trustee student, I saw your hand first. And, uh, well, it's it's unbelievable the amount of work that has begun. And uh, I'm really looking forward now that we've the election over with the governor, really to deep, deep dive again into, into some of the work and the reports that are coming and really truly making, making a difference for young people. Um, it's just so inspiring to have a good strategic plan. And I am just such a fan of a strategic plan that living. And it isn't on a bookshelf somewhere. And I really appreciate the quarterly reports. And I hope, I wish the gallery was full. Um, but that that highlights for me how much, much we need to keep talking in our schools. And people's leading these discussions about what is happening and where we want to go and how do you be, be involved. So my kudos to, to all of you um, for all the work that you're doing and our superintendent. Um, my question is around the the investment change changes. They are quite quite dramatic. Um, I'm not saying they're not good. They're great, but I think they're quite different for our family. And and when I think about families in the last two and a half half years, what they've been going through, I don't don't think they were really meaningfully paying attention to maybe a board meeting or the discussions we've had at education. Um, and I think they're just trying to, to make their family go and put food on, food on the table and make sure their kids are healthy and they're healthy at our schools. But uh, my question is around how much engagement um, our schools is having with the assessment changes, always remembering there's, there's new little kids coming there every year, um, new parents who are, what? What does this mean for us? So given the COVID constraints and how parents weren't even in schools you know is, is there a real targeted discussion around some some of this yeah you. well, it's a great question and something that will continue to unfold and so certainly one thing, one thing I'm really proud of, of in Richmond is that through, through the work of Superintendent, Assistant Superintendent Archer previously and other others who've had this role. Um, there's been a great deal, deal of work highlighting in the last number of years and Richmond has stepped into this work early and so, so for, for as you say, many new families or different. This may be their first time looking at at a proficiency scale. This well, this may be their first opportunity um, looking at their child's pro program of learning in that way. We do have a number of students who are very familiar and actually tell their parents parents about this. We've been using an option for for many educators in elementary proficiency scales and at secondary. 
uh, very much uh, uh, a large number of at least half using proficient efficiency scale and prior to this, and has grown over time. Having said, said that, we've been offering parent parent eatings, and again, that's and that's one app, and certainly not the not the only one. We had about uh, 200 or so parents last year, 300 this year, and we know that administrators are also sharing through hacks. Teacher having those conversation conversation uh, um, conferences with children to talk about not only you know where is my child and what does this mean to be on say a proficiency scale which will be uh, the reporting for KK to nine as of next year, but also what does that mean? And so that growing piece not only for families but for educators as well. And we're, we're new to step into, into that work. And, and to your point, we will always have new uh, fam families. Um, there are, are some documents from the ministry and paint brochures that, that we're sharing as well that schools are able to pass on to families. Thank you, Chairperson Tabletney, and um, wow, thank you so much, so much to staff with this uh, comprehensive update. Cer certainly puts in, in, into perspective of, of how league education is, is uh, progressing in our district. Um, I, I just have a, a two, two questions uh, related, related to priority one, one, or three. Um, so in goal objective two, it states that uh, we're promoting understanding of the first people's pr principles of being uh, amongst students. Uh, and so I'm just curious to, um, you know, what kind of resources and materials are provided to, to educators to promote that, um, whether, whether that, you know, displays being given uh, to, to classrooms, posters, or any, mm -hmm. any sort of in-class discussion, maybe perhaps, perhaps you can. Uh, yeah, I'll start with a very simple one, which, which is that um, the first people's principles of learning po posters are prominently on display in classrooms and through our schools. Uh, where there's always always we don't stop at a poster of course one thing thing that's been important as people's principles were first introduced was for educators and understanding different elements and then how you weave them there's both direct um, instruction in terms of reviewing and talking about what is how do students connect into this but also in learning opportunities there are first people's principles reflected in where students identify that they may see the connection where teachers may, may direct them to that. Um, I'm reminded of a story of a kindergarten teacher, teacher who's working on an activity with her class. It wasn't going very well. And the teacher and this kindergarten class the teacher was kind of going, oh, going, oh you know, what are we going to do? And out of, you know, with the small voice in the corner said, remember, learning takes patience and time, which is one of the first people's principles of learning it. I share that that has it is something that, that is both overt and discussed, but also wherever possible, we are weaving that in. And certainly we're, we're fortunate to have uh, ind Indigenous teacher consultants on our staff who, who focus on build, building that capacity and educators directly. Uh, however, our teacher consultants all work to incorporate that in the opportunities that they provide as well. Thank you. Thank you for that. It's very helpful to understand you know, how, how that actually is work, working mm -hmm. on the ground. Uh, and so I appreciate that. that uh, second question, question so on goal three, uh, objective three, um, and I understand that uh, the, the work is being done to identify a, a, a potential central sites for Indigenous teachers teach gathering places. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's an update on that, uh, whether we're close to determining meaning a site and whether, um, yeah, there's any progress on that. Front. We just met with, with the facility earlier this, this week to talk about that because it's... Um, we are looking at how do we sort of, if we're possible, geographically uh, locate, but also working within the long, long range facility plan, knowing the growth, knowing, um, pressure points in different sites. So working um, with Executive Director Geyer as well um, to, and his team to identify those sites. So we actually just, just met earlier this week, named some sites that we thought, well, is this a possibility? Looking at that in terms of current space available. Um, um, as well as any potential potential coming in the next immediate years, because we because we want to uh, try to have them stay in one place as, as long as Ms. Paul and not be moving them from year to year. Right, right. Yes, and yeah, yeah. Thanks for that. Because I think um, you know we 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 talk a lot about truth and reconciliation, and mm -hmm. I think think our work is ensure that carry out this objective um, uh, meaningfully for our our students, um, uh, whether they're in their indigenous background or not. So, really appreciate that. Thank you. Larson. <clears throat> this time. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I feel like I can't get enough. I, I just want to hear more because I, I, I think I can't speak for everybody. I, I think our role is that 
uh, sharing with our community, community what we learn and, and so on. And so to hear the in-depth examples of what you provide for us helps, I know from for myself, my imagination and um, understanding yeah. of how these think how these changes are taking place. Um, I, I, I remember as of time trustee, somebody said to me, well, what do they mean? They mean core competencies. And I thought, um, um, I'll find out. I, Cause I didn't really, really understand, I, I, you know, coming from the age that I am and it's math, math, sign this, and this is how it's taught and what have you. And it feels, feels to me like, like what we're, we're do, doing is not teaching kids how to do school, but how to do life. In that, in that sense, all in that, that learning. And I, as, as a trustee, um, Sarge Sar was mentioning about the assessment. And I think uh, I, I see, I get to see a lot of what's happening, happening already because I have a daughter who's a teacher. Te but, but, but also I think, I think our children are also going to be teaching, like you say, their parents speak because we all went through that with our, with our kids when things were, were different and we learned, learned. And it came along as each year. But the richness of what you provide us in quarterly um, report. I, I, is that me? No, no, no. They're, they're invaluable. And so uh, uh, thank you. I just, it, it, it's, it's learning. I'm learning. And then when I, when I learn, I can hopefully help somebody, somebody to learn and feel comfortable and understand. And so thank you very much. Is there any other questions? They have a good teacher. Great stuff. And, and uh, but what I also wondered too is, was, was what's going on in terms of moving forward, are we up against any, any sort of roadblocks or, or obstacles that, that have, like you heard of the minute about, you know, <laughs> shortage and, and that kind of stuff has that come into play at all all in in our growth and development <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just enter in the sense that um professional learning that could could happen in the with release is a challenge because we don't don't have the coverage the, the ability to provide coverage so we had to find unique uh way, ways of offering different op different opportunities just shown to to offering things on pro days or after school well, there are videos and learning link births and other opportunities as well well our teacher consultant model and model and it's ref in uh, um, the update has changed slightly in that we have teacher consultants with caseloads of schools in the sense that they support five or six schools so they are in the school on site site um, throughout the week, week and then able to go go into classrooms regularly so that it's on site in context support. So we've had to pivot with with some of the shortages constraints uh, to to provide ways of, of supporting bill capacity. You know, I love the fact that that you know when I went to school, school, Richmond, I mean learning happened, but it was sort of like a one dimensional. I just love, love the fact that this is just multi dimensional learning, and it's like once once you learn something. You, you don't stop. You can learn something else from that leads to leads to, leads to that, and uh, I think it's great that uh, the model that we would come up with, and you know, kudos to the staff for uh, for implementing it so well. Thanks. Okay. Are there any more questions or comments from Steve? I I just want to say, you know, you know, the assessment uh, practices. I think think that's an important piece. Uh, you know. Or, for writers, parents, and, and for our younger young people, because they're going to learn how to assess themselves, know how to, to improve, and um, what they need to work towards. And you know, we've been waiting for, the, for this change for a long time. It's been implemented slowly, and I, and I, I think that that was the way to do it, but I, I think it's going to make a huge difference for, for the young people to know. know. And, um, and moving on, on in life to to be able to assess, you know, what they need to know, to know newly assess themselves. I, th I think it's amazing. Uh, I also was listening to, well, I have way too many comments, but um, I, I was gonna ask about, you know, the um, conducting the student focus groups, groups. And I know that you, you're gonna have a large scale, large scale student con conference and I think that's a really fantastic idea. Idea. Um, 
because as I noticed, uh, you know, you had met um, with 38 for feedback, but uh, when we met with students at a dinner last year, or a couple of them, of them I, even they said, you know, we need to target other their voices and collect information from a broad uh, range of students. And, and, um, and so I think, I think that's, that's really important to remember in all of this, that there are, you know, lots of different types of learners and, and we need, we need to focus on all of them. And I know that's, that's hard to do, but I do think the students' students is a good way to, way to, to collect that, and that information. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd share from just a comment oh, on that. Oh, I, I Try that again, again. Um, it, it's important to uh, understand that certainly we have large scale events like, like the conferencing planned right now, but there are also very, very regular small event events happening where kids are, kids are being open to a variety of kids from a variety of backgrounds on a variety of topics to, to get their input that will inform the work that's happening. So we certainly would, would uh, support that. Thank you. Yeah, that's very good. Good to know. I, I also wanted to, to comment on the centralized student referral role process uh, for placement in, in the internet programs. I think that very much needed and I'm glad to see that. So, um, you know, I think, I think just amazing work has happened in this, this strategic be so fruitful. Amazing goals, goals objectives to work towards. So thank you all, all very much for um, Presenting to us on a regular basis. Yes, Tr Trustee. I'm... Thank you. I believe uh, Trustee Beliza has. Oh, he's come back and and. Okay. Yes. I see your hand up, Trustee Beliza. So. Yes, yes. Uh, I'm sorry that my Wi-Fi signal is lost. I'm in the Philippines. And, uh, there is some kind of problem, I guess. But, uh, but anyway, I hope that the uh, this nobody has. Ask this question, Ask this. and uh, what I'd like to know is: uh, uh, Are there are any there indicators, indicators? Uh, uh, that, uh, based on this uh, subject, uh, uh, would truly inspire the students? And uh, my next question would be: How do we validate? or audit the success or failure of this, uh, you know, uh, strategic priority in order to help the trustees in terms of uh, improving student achievement and uh, continuous improvement. Superintendent Robertson will answer your question. Thank you. Uh, great question, Trustee Beliza. So through the chair, uh, every operational plan, and there's a whole operational plan for each strategic prior priority. For every single goal area, there are a number of key performance measurements indicates that will be reported on or that are reported on in the annual report. So uh, what you're hearing about this evening is all the th things that are happening to support, support uh, the continuous improvement. What you'll hear is the measurement of, the, of that through the annual report, report, and that comes through in September. Thank you. Okay. Are there any more questions? Well, thank you very much, much for presenting. Okay, okay. moving on to our Richmond International Education Update. And I need to call the, the Director of Richmond and International Education, um, Mr. Sefton, to present. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for including the reports to national education in your agenda this evening. It's my, it's my pleasure to deliver that report, report to you, and particularly uh, in person uh, tonight. It's, it's wonderful to be here with all of you. Um, I'd like, I'd like to start uh, my report where I, where I usually end off and just acknowledge and thank the support board, senior team, 
all my colleagues in international, all of our colleagues uh, around the district, ITT, HR, finance, all of our colleagues and uh, administrators and educators and educators in our schools, uh, we shared, um, it's a collaborative, collaborative effort we are able to do in international education. It's a reflection of the collaboration and support and, and, and um, guidance that, I, that we receive. And, and, and um, I hope you feel as positive about uh, international education as I do. Um, the, the, just as by way of a reminder, our program generally consists of typically consists of long-term study pro programs, short-term study programs. We have an after-school uh, connections program, uh, as well as group programs and also uh, professional learning programs. Um, um, I am pleased uh, to be able to report that uh, we have been able to uh, meet our enroll enrollment expectations over the last three year period. Our long-term study uh, uh, programs have a, a, a return or reestablishment uh, to our pre-pandemic uh, uh, levels. levels. Not quite, quite there yet. We are seeing growth, continued growth. growth. I think that uh, potential for growth continues uh, into our next three-year cycle. Uh, our short, short-term program, um, we are able to see a rebirth, I guess, and a return of one of our short-term programs, uh, particularly our, our extended uh, group groups and group programs. And so we're able to uh, come back uh, for the first time in the second half of the last year, uh, which is wonderful. And we will uh, are we will see the same same again for for the second half, the second semester back half of this current uh, uh, school year. Individual uh, short term programs include also individual uh, uh, pro programs for uh, school experience programs for students. And those remain strong and will continue to remain strong. Our summer camera camp, we've been to deliver and offer a summer camp students in the last uh, few years. Uh, and smaller uh, grouping, but uh, they were wonderful nonetheless. Uh, and um, we are obviously expecting to be able to do the same in 23 with the hope, with, with potential of seeing those uh, more uh, uh, participants be able, be able to join around in the summer. Um, our international student profile continues to evolve. Uh, we've again see some uh, continued diverse diversification student body body. We now have students from, I believe, about 31, 31 uh, different uh, location regions around the around world. Um, a little bit different. Uh, uh, we've seen uh, a continuation of uh, slightly shorter programs, so a few more uh, students that uh, study with us for a single single semester, single year, um, and also increased demand and for our stay. Uh, uh, program, program for wanting to stay with our, our host families. Um, challenge, challenge. Uh, we'll start with a uh, uh, particular order, but, but home stay remains, remains a challenge. Being able to offer uh, accommodation for all, all of our students would uh, 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 to, to stay with a family. Uh, our international uh, education home stay program. Uh, now to welcome uh, homestays, retain homestays, uh, our, our particular challenges is obviously, this is not unique to us, of course, this is, is uh, homestays, uh, accommodations are a challenge all across public sector programs, perhaps private sector programs, um, private uh, homestay companies as well. Um, related to things like inflation, inflation you know, the, the cost of living uh, and, and whatnot. Excuse me. Uh, school availability is a challenge for us. Being able to, to ensure we can find seats and, and, and course options uh, uh, for our st students would come for a long term or short term terms. Um, classrooms uh, as well for for our group groups uh, come for an extended stay. Uh, for our connections program um, is is also a challenge. COVID nineteen. Uh, and I know you probably would like to, to not hear that, that word anymore, but it does and will have, have a continued impact on, on our program, uh, certainly into this year and probably for, for uh, a period, period out as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. Geopolitical factors uh, remain a challenge for us. Again, related to COVID-19 COVID policies, uh, mil uh, 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 military con conflicts, um, um, certainly energy costs or things related to inflation, currency exchange rates, uh, uh, trade disputes, uh, you know, you know, foreign, foreign affairs are a challenge uh, for national education program, and not just for us, uh, but they do remain challenges. Our mental, mental reason issues uh, uh, can be in are also uh, a challenge for international programs, things related to uh, immigration policies and, and initiatives related to, uh, again, Ben military conflicts or, or other, other initiatives. Um, IRCCC, Immigration and uh, Refugee and Citizenship Canada, who 
uh, process state permits, entry documents. Uh, have uh, sometimes that can uh, equate to delays, uh, but in, in students and, and parents being able to be able to documents to get here uh, on, on time uh, for study. Study uh, remains a challenge. Uh, there's also agreements between our provincial government, so called provincial governments, and the federal government related to funding and study permits and work permit permit requirements and how that impacts funding uh, uh, in, in, the, in the provincial jurisdictions. Uh, those remain challenge, challenges for to, uh, to navigate and, and account for. Uh, competition, again, nothing new there. We continue to uh, have con competition from uh, other countries. New Zealand and Australia have softened their hard borders again. Uh, obviously, uh, pu public practice, uh, uh, IEPs, international education programs, inter international schools, you know, you know onshore, offshore, uh, offshore schools, online schools, and, and, and the like remain um, challenges for us. Successes. Um, I'd, I'd like to think we were, were able to, um, the fact that we had an international pro program of Vita, in my opinion, international edu education program through these challenging times is a success, and I'm, I'm happy that we were able to do so. You uh, share the same, same feeling. Uh, we did see, uh, for, ex for example, the largest number of, of new applications September and Tim take this year, uh, and, and as well, too, uh, we, we held steady and did well. well again, I think in the uh, approaching second semester intake take um while home stay is a challenge i, I would would like to add it to our, our success, uh, section of our presentation because we were able to to uh increase, increase our stay families to international program through the pandemic and can continue to do so this year um and through various uh, ways and and um we were able, able to have uh, another another first in-person home appreciation event uh last last friday here uh, which was wonderful. We tended to do that uh, virtual last year. It's, it's wonderful to bring people in to, to acknowledge their support and importance to our program. We had some fun. We weighed some gifts and some, some, some door presents. We also had a, a nice and important uh, uh, and very um, helpful uh, presentation on mental health and, and how to support international families, um, and not just during this challenging time, but all the, all the time. Um, um, it was one did and was a lot of and we probably ate a little bit too much. Um, communication and engagement, uh, that's, I think, a success. We'd be able to leverage and, and make use of our virtual communication platforms to increase our support and engagement with our students, students and all respond, responsible as we be able to reach out to the students and their parents before they, they arrive. So we have pre-arrival uh, orientations and can uh, deal with all, all the nitty-gritty about uh, not just about the travel, uh, but uh, medical insurance and home etiquette and what to expect at, at school on your stay and things like that. Um, that that's also us to um, also are, are in a first in person or, or really you get all of our students and new students together for orientation. We're able to then focus on community building, you know, to have, have the students kind of to spend more and more through to various activities and field trips, trips to engage with each other, other and to get to know each other, other uh, in general as new international students in Richmond, but also based in their school, school cohort as well. Uh, that worked out really well. Uh, weather uh, was wonderful for us as well. Uh, two uh, two Clamorous success stories, I guess, but I think they're important. Important we've been able to uh, continue to um, uh, build, build in, uh, enhancements or so our database that allows us to communicate with our our parents and and responsible adults efficiently, be able to minimize uh, the, the efficiency on the process, but also to minimize our environmental until impact. Well, um, we've been able to uh, enhance our our, our home stay. Uh, uh, Online application module through our data database as well, able to, to uh, welcome uh, uh, to, uh, lo local families that want to learn more about our program and maybe maybe join our program to do so through our database. So again, 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 that's papers and, and allows us to build a lot of efficiencies into to connecting and, and, pro and process uh, uh, applications and parents and whatnot. Uh, applications we are we're, we're able to have launched uh, a payment platform that uh, again is integrated to our data database the students and parents various options of how to how to pay quickly and efficiently as well as well save money uh, on transfer fees or on currency exchange rate and whatnot it gets integrated into our database so it allows us to build uh, efficiencies in our process as well as to support our uh, and work and work uh, with our our, our you know, with our finance or colleagues finance and sit uh, time I'm on that process as well. So, so um, that's worked out really, really well as well. And, and, and since 
we, we were able to, uh, uh, again, for the time in three years, uh, uh, re-engage in international travel and business. It's an important part of what we do to be able to meet with our parents and students, and our embassy staffs and schools in person. Uh, I can tell you, you it, uh, for my, myself, the time in three, three years, it was uh, I think the first time, one of the first times that I actually the YBR and I weren't a long time. Felt a little bit uh, odd, and, and it's just like uh, that felt was a little rusty. I am unfortunately a little packed on my first trip, trip and thought I know better there than this. But anyway, it was it was wonderful uh, to to be there, and the energy of these of these it's, uh, was just, just the people just feeling happy to be to, together in person, and then all the feedback about how people perceived Canada throughout our challenges. And, uh, and but, you know, Canada was, was able to keep the borders result open. And here in BC, uh, you know, again, with keeping schools open and safe and the students' engagement levels. And it was just, it was just wonderful to receive all that uh, positive the feedback for receiving uh, the, the feedback, positive feedback back on behalf of all of us here in the district was wonderful as well. As well. Um, and also finally, you know, the, the less smiling faces and how parents and schools, uh, uh, I think, think is into the success of our program. I'd like to think so anyway. And we are, we are uh, certainly since we've opened our uh, applications for September, so I immediately uh, sort of bump up in applications and steady. And in the last two or so, we saw a significant in increase for uh, applications applications uh, for uh, September. So, um, so that's a positive. So uh, challenges that certainly uh, remain, but I feel that I believe that we can pull a positive outlook, outlook for our program uh, moving forward into the next three year win. And, uh, and, um, and I, I just like to thank again, again, everyone for uh, giving me your ear and it's a pleasure to, to be here with you again, again tonight. So concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, very interesting and so glad that it's going and that we weathered the storm and we're moving ahead. ahead. Um, do you trust please have any questions for uh, Trustee Larson? <clears throat> Two comments. Um, first one, um, the care that is given to, to the students that come from, like you, you thanked everybody for clearing in the in district, and you see it in the district from um, the teachers, the principal, everybody. And it, it's just amazing, and uh, and and how uh, the your department cares, and how quickly uh, uh, children can care of because they're they're people's kids. And and I I, I was always asked with that, and I, and I still, and and suddenly I think it's so, so important for people to to realize that. This program affects our whole community for years, not, not just time. The kids don't just come and leave. The homestay families only travel and visit with the families of the kids. The kids come back years later, later with their children or fiancés, and that affects our school community. It affects our, our whole community and the province and so on, but, but our community especially. especially. And, and I think, think is something we all have to remember. It's, it's, a, it's a program, it's a, it's a business, but it's, it's making, making a difference community. And um, I, I'm prou proud of it, very, very proud of it. Thank you. Steve Yang. Thank you, thank you, Vice Chairperson Tabotni, and uh, thank you so much for the the work. Um, I just want to say that um, the 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 international education program, I, I believe, it really opens door for learners, um, whether that's from overseas, overseas, or even you know domestic learners here, right? Because it's all about uh, learning with each other and and about each. Other. And I know when I was an exchange student in, in university, so I certainly enjoyed that. Um, so it's all about building bridges and enriching diversity, which is which is something that I'm, I'm sure a lot of folks uh, will be happy to be to support. Um, just in terms of questions, um, I'm wondering if you can sort of give a high level um, on, on communication with perhaps education counterparts overseas, uh, perhaps if there, there's a working relationship uh, and how that uh, working relationship like. Uh, 
with you folks. We have a, a, a we work with uh, with our, our embassies, our, our trade commuters, uh, school education boards, uh, school schools directly as well. There are uh, a, a range of study abroad organizations, some larger, some small. Something that we work with, with uh, and the communication is regular. Uh, you know, in the pandemic, it was strictly you know uh, related to email and virtual communications through um, uh, Teams, WhatsApp, uh, you know, um, and Zoom, think that. Um, and uh, the communication continues uh, throughout. Um, you know, when the students students before you know uh, uh, arrive, while they're here as well, uh, in, in various ways and and, and forms. Um, and the, the, the relationship uh, building, thing, it, it takes time and uh, certainly, certainly to make the establish relationships and then to maintain them. Um, and uh, certainly uh, the travel, the being in person and meet with one person makes a difference. Certainly for par parents and since they love, love, you know, it's important for them to see that, you know, we're just not on a piece of, piece of paper or a picture on the internet that, that the kids uh, will still see me here. Uh, they'll see see me there, and, and or my or my colleagues travel on our behalf as well, and and uh, they'll see us here as well. So the communication uh, it takes various forms, and it's important. It's long term. Uh, our goal is to build uh, for long term uh, sustainability of relationships and lives and last a long time. And and that uh, so we just roll up the sleeves when we need to, and and do do all the hard work too. And, and speaking of relationship building, if my I may follow up, um, does uh, RIE interact with um, any four of our sister cities at all? Um, to your knowledge? Not currently. Uh, no, I believe in the past. I believe there there has been uh, support and commission in the past, um, but not currently. No, no. And uh, that's that's good to know. Um, and, and just one last question. I'm not, I'm not sure if you were able to let us know where the, the top origins uh, for international students are at the point. Right. right. Um, so uh, typically, Northeast Asia would be uh, uh, the large, large uh, most of our students would come, come from Northeast Asia. Uh, uh, in, in there, we've seen through, through uh, it's in the report uh, there as well, as well, that during the pandemic, we uh, uh, saw an increase in students from certain uh, uh, part of, uh, within the re region uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, Southeast Asia, Asia, as well as in Northeast Asia, Asia and Europe uh, as well. Um, and um, um, so if we would look at yeah, Northeast Asia and uh, South, Southeast Asia, two uh, largest um, um, the two region regions where we have more students uh, certainly during the pan pandemic and continuing this year year, uh, year is also uh, a growth area for us thank you very much thank you mm -hmm. uh trustee sergeant thank you very much it's nice to be together in person i know know we're virtually getting updates etc uh the last two and two and a half three years has been been very difficult for your department and i recognize that and I would really like you to take back to all the people that will that work so hard and, and try to make it work through a pandemic. I mean, I mean an international pandemic, we're trying, trying to bring international students here. Um, and, you know, the, the importance of our program is not re really to money, even though it does supplement our, our, our budget. It's really for the interaction of our students from all over the world with each other. Each other. So I'm sad that, that students for the last while haven't had that interaction. Um, but I'm fully confident. Um, I do th think the challenges will be there for, as you say, two years, three years. But we're going to keep building, building and build. And your, your on-site visits and your staff will make a huge difference. And I just, I just wanted to know that um, I fully am supportive of the program and of all your work and recognizing the struggles and the pressure that comes to this this program sometimes um from us so thank you very much, very much for all your work. and uh trustee belisa this question thank you madam j and thank you for the great works for this international program. Uh, what I'd like uh, to, we, we, uh, I'd like to know uh, what's the long-term long -term outlook or stability of the program. 
and what are the factors that might impact uh, the program. We, I understand the importance in terms of knowledge, learning, learning immigration, and to our budget. But so if you could help us, us trustees, to plan ahead, plan ahead and see the greater perspective and outlook of this program. Thank you for the question. And I, I, I think generally that, that we, we can feel positive about the outlook of our international education program and international education in our province. Um, again, throughout the pand pandemic, uh, has, has been viewed positively as, as a destination for international students in K-12 and programs like ours, but also at the secondary uh, level as well. Uh, BBC in particular uh, uh, was so uh, comments that we receive all the time about how, how we were able to work through and manage the the uh, uh, the pandemic pandemic as well. So there's lots, lots of positive uh, uh, feeling and energy about about NBC and BC and, and and what we do. A feeling about you know public education and public health care. Those types of issues also are important for uh, for a lot of our parents and their students around the world as well. Um, on the student side and side, studying abroad is still important. It, it remained important throughout the pandemic, but for obvious reasons, we're not able to engage. We're not able to go over to overseas or difficult for many, for many of them. Um, but the, the importance and the value of studying, studying abroad uh, for the parents and the students, that remains. Uh, that, that is not waning. Uh, and in some ways, it, it, as I say, it when I uh, and my colleagues have, have embarked on our first uh, uh, international trips, that like, sort of that uh, built up energy, energy feeling of, of let's go, we're ready to go. This is very positive and and uh, and, and and they want to have their experience and 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 and, and a real meaning, meaningful impact on uh, uh, studying abroad for, for their um, uh, for in many ways, but certainly as they move forward into either remaining here in here in Canada for post secondary school schools or running home and then in energy prospects X and things like that. Um, the challenges, uh, certainly, again, the, the, the geopolitical factors are important. Uh, they do have impacts, as I mentioned, on, on the economy, on currency exchanges, the abilities, the, the hardening or soft borders uh, is important. important. And different kinds of conflicts uh, uh, do make an impact. Um, the currency exchange rates make a significant impact. And they certainly uh, have, have been featuring the health of the, of the economies here on our side, but also, so, uh, again, the infl inflation and interest rates and, and cost of living here, here make a difference as well. Um, but, um, um, but I still feel that, uh, that, that for all those reasons, uh, and, and, and in spite, spite of those challenges, that, that we are able to, uh, to uh, identify them and, and, and to account for them and be able to plan uh, accordingly. I think we have a patient approach, a comprehensive approach, we, we we plan for the best case case scenario. We're also uh, planning for the least, you know, or challenges as a contingency plan that 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 will be able to to manage uh, uh, both of our programs and still have a viable program on, on the revenue revenue side. So on the 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 internationalization side, the the meaningful uh, cultural and, and social connection side as well. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, no, Sean, you mentioned a bunch of uh, variables. I, I'm always amazed at the range of variables that affect kids coming to our program. Okay. To as little as you know, being being homesick, and do I want do I want to go to World Conf? It's just um, in your report you provide some numbers and yes. talked about uh, 720 kids right now, possibly hopefully hopefully 750 by the end of the year. Yep, yep. In, in our hey, heyday, when before core COVID and everything, what were, were our numbers like? That or what were our numbers? Yeah, uh, thank, thank you for the question. So you, we'd always always been at eight hundred uh, to nine hundred range, sort of sort of in, in range for our long term study. Okay, so we're not, not like a thousand off, and we're 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 not too far from that mark. Then no, we're not. Okay, okay, that's good to hear. Yeah, thanks, thanks for all the work you're doing. Thank you, Trustee Long. Thank you for the for the uh, we look at that uh, all the information and it sounds sounds good for the school district. Is the source is all one of the resources is that go to the school school district way. 
So one thing is that, that I have is, is suspect. Now, now the rental is, uh, you, know, you know, the rent, rent increase uh, double uh, from year to year to year. So how about, how is that a program is hard to find family to, to involved in it? Yes, yes, thank you for the question. Yes, it is. Uh, certainly the cost of living, uh, inflation, you know, interest rates, just uh, gas prices, and even though well, they've recently, recently come down, still higher than they were uh, not, not that long ago. So certainly those were all factors. Uh, you know, in, during the, uh, the pandemic, some states were on, on break, right, as, as they referred to it. They were worrying, obviously, it all were about, about uh, COVID-19 and what that means and how we mitigate the risk and, and things. And then uh, slowly, slowly uh, as uh, as evolved and through the pandemic and out of it, it uh, you know, stayed, most of those home, home stations were able to come back and at their own time and we were able to welcome them, welcome them to our home state. But, but certainly, uh, you know, the cost of uh, it is, is a challenge. Um, and as I say, it's, it's, a, it's not specific to us, uh, you know, all of our other other leagues and peer programs and other school districts uh, and, and also also in the private and private homestay companies are experiencing the same challenge so yeah homestay and accommodations in vancouver and metro vancouver especially are a challenge i have a question too i said the cats so when the international students come so the age is that every age need a guardian or have a, have a slight Elder one or uh, I, yeah. yes, yes. Uh, uh, all students, international students, because they're minors, uh, in in order to uh, uh, enter Canada and have a study permit or to come, they need to have a custodian, a, a designated custodian. Uh, if they're uh, uh, some of them, uh, uh, especially at younger ages, will, will have to come with a parent, parent legal guardian, and that will, will live with them, stay with them the whole time that they're here. Um, uh, and even even in the cases we ask, ask the, the parents uh, have a. a custodian or a support person designated here as well like, well again to help the cultural uh, uh, adjustments and the language and the translation of thing, things like in addition to you know our office as you know we we offer 27 wrap wrap around care you know we have a, have a nursery phone our, our office never closes even if physically the, the offices were uh, on call all the time 12 months out of the year 365 uh, 20 uh, 24 7 7 uh, but in addition to that we we do do ask uh, the parents to have because we understand too that the you know obviously their children might be young young they also need support as well as well they're having the abroad experience as well so yes uh you know all the inter international students uh, being minors do need to have a de designated garden and, and uh, or custodian and be able to enter uh canada and to study in our program that's the really important uh, yes. the concern about the, the students thank you thank you thank you Oops. Uh, Thanks for the report. I'm going to be trust trusts are very interested in. You now I was looking at the at where some of, some of our students are coming from, and uh, uh, you know Myanmar and Cambodia, Mongolia, Spain, Spain, Kazakhstan, Turkey. I mean that's just just amazing, and that, as uh, Trustee Yang has said, um, opens the doors for our students and our, and our staff to further learn. So um, thank you. So much, much report. I know, I know we look forward to it, and, and it's good to know that we're not far off from, uh, you know, recovering from from the from the pandemic, and and uh, and it, it's a great, a great program. Just so, so thank that that managed to keep going through the through the challenges. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, and thank if you. If you have no more questions, then then that's it. But but. Uh, really great report. Okay. Very, very Thank you very much. Worth waiting thing for. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we'll move into our new business now. Now, and um, on our, our agenda, we have our board authority authorized course for board approval, and um, we have have a report from. Assistant Superintendent uh, Nolan attached, and then there is a recommendation as well. Um, as, as described, the purpose of this report is to give some context uh, and information regarding newly developed African and Black Canadian Studies 12 course with a request for board of, as a board authority authorized course. 
Um, before going, going further with a report, I wanted, I wanted to just share a little bit of background about what a board authority authorized course, course is. Uh, uh, this is an opportunity that is separate from our ministry curriculum. It allows educators to, to explore content beyond the boundaries of ministry curriculum and that can, can provide some additional choices and flexibilities for students. These are courses that are not part of, of the C Ministry of Edu Education and Care curricular offerings, but are authorized by boards or their board authorities according to requirements set, set by the ministry. Uh, these BA courses, which is what they're or short, short lulled, um, um, are be used as all or part of the, of the 20 active credits that, that students can use to fulfill their graduation requirements. They might, they might offer it at the grade 10, 10 to 12. They can be in a, um, a duplication of something that is already offered by the ministry or have heavy over, overlap in those courses, courses and that um, provide an opportunity for the develop, development of locally developed courses uh, that are relevant to the, the needs and the interests of students. Uh, one question I wanted to address too is at, at times we may, we may have brought further to, to education committee prior to bringing it to the board meeting. The timing, timing of election and the goal of being able to offer this course uh, across schools in fall of 2023, the, there's a little bit of a time crunch, so it's coming straight to the board for, for sharing and, and discussion. Uh, one thing I'll also say as I, as I share about this course is the work um, around justice, uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion is work as at, at play at all schools at K-12. And, and certainly we want to, the, the, this course very much re reflects diversity, equity, equity, and inclusion work. It's also um, reflected in our curriculum and in different ways. This is, this is an opportunity for a deeper dive. I just wanted to share a little, little bit about that as we be, begin. Certainly as well, this ties uh, closely to some elements of, of our, the strategic plan, priority one, uh, designing and offering a variety of learning, learning options, the evolving and diverse needs of learners. And equity and inclusion, supporting all, all learners to develop a sense of, of connection, belonging, and personal and cultural identity. Um, as we move forward, you know, you know, they're reflective of the diversity we see and see in our greater society. And it's really, it's really important for learners to see themselves and for other, other learners to learn through through what they see in their coursework. Currently, there is no ministry course in Black history. A number of districts are also uh, developing some things some different similar, similar to this. Um, and I've, we've looked at those as, as we've worked on this with, within our own district. Uh, after initial discussion with senior staff uh, last, about a year ago, the administrator for equity and inclusion, inclusion along with a teacher consultant, initiated the development of an, of an African Black Canadian study course. A call went out, out for educators to support this and a very excited group of Richmond secondary teachers, teacher li librarians and administrator led by the teacher cons consultant and the district administrator for equity and inclusion and came together and, and planned out the course during the 2021-2022 school year. There were, there were multiple meetings, research, thoughtful discussion and many of the te teachers actually found it incredibly positive professional learning as they, they worked to develop this course. course. The course, course is an exception of African and Black Canadian, and by that meaning people, people of African or Caribbean ancestry who've settled in Canada, Canada, their history and culture, especially amplifying Black voices and experiences, Canadian history and society to the present day. Based on principles of anti-racism uh, and decolonization, it, it's an opportunity for all students to examine, examine existing issues and explore different narratives that amplify Black voices and experiences. And as, as per the authority uh, course requirements and procedure guidebooks, this course, course does meet requirements for a BAA course. It's, course. it's quite a risk process and template. And the template we, we use is the one provided by, by the ministry. And so you'll see if as you explore um, the course offering itself, that it is designed to explore and ensure that we do meet those requirements. And certainly through the Board of Educa Education strict plan, our district has committed it to ensuring that dis district learning environments are equitable and inclusive. And the district is actively ad addressing her strategic prior priority to goal to, to unconscious just bias, privilege, systemic discrimination and marginalization based, based on factors such as ability, color, cultural identity, gender, gender identity, indigeneity, political beliefs, race, religious beliefs, sexual orientation, social economic status, and the aims, aims and objectives of this course are assistant with and another step towards achieving, achieving those goals through the strategic plan. 
I'll stop there and I'm, I'm happy to answer the questions you may, you may have. As you can see um, through the board, I've summarized some of the pieces in the report that um, we've developed. Well, you, if you've had a chance to go through the course itself, I think it gives some, some further explanation about, about the structure and instructional practices for the course. So do trustees have questions? Uh, trust you. It's really good, good to have uh, this be, be a, a cost cost. So is that we really have uh, another choice for student learning? And so is that after this uh, exact this? So what our this school district will plan and just like the city plan priority to go to is on, on put on this and I plan to put more other a cost cost that's like for student more choices to learn certainly there's always the the options as, as different needs arise or we identify different pieces such as this is this wasn't a course identified before to explore and look at all at options the way as we look to see uh, what will meet the needs and and the interests as well as as you say in terms of the learning options for our students that will it depend on the local school and the committee meeting need? It can come from, from a variety of different places. It is obsess. It's, it's taken about a year, just over a year to put this course together. But it's something that um, sometimes it can come from a variety of places, often from within school. Um, and then we, we're always interested in looking at not, not everything would to a BAA course, because sometimes it is also brought in through other existing course courses. But it's something that we always explore over time. We're just thinking think that this the rich, rich is really multicultural. Hmm. Many different have a, the student have to be really interesting to learn their, yes. their own history, the people or people who uh, contribute in the in the character. Yes. All the sort of thing. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Any other trustees? Uh, Trustee Yang. Thank you, Chairperson Tablani and. and uh, 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 Mrs. McMahon for the detailed report there. Um, so I just had, just had a few questions and some remarks as well. Um, in terms of uh, uh, implementing this, this course, um, are there any training or resource opportunities for teachers beyond the list of uh, resources that, is, that are in the framework? Um, things like workshops and Whatever. Yeah, it's certainly, uh, you know, if, this, if the course is approved, our, our teacher consultant for equity uh, and diversity equity would be providing support for, for teachers who are interested, would, would offer professional learning opportunities, is certainly able to, able to come along um, through the implementation of the first year. And I could see two depending uh, for the schools that, that offering it is bringing in those teachers together for professional learning as the year goes on. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And um, I, I know Trustee will see what um, question, questions uh, she's already already covered it, but I hope that um, there there are other opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, whether through a BAAA or through their learning learning opportunities to advance and some, um, uh, and to learn about other other minorities and, and um, uh, racialized groups uh, in Canada. Um, and, and just to be clear, be clear, the call is offered through the Richmond Birch School as well. well it can it could be an offering through Richmond Birch School as well. I, I think no, I, that's fantastic. Yeah. Is you know, uh, if if like one school doesn't have enough uh, yes. enrollment, that's right. then students students can take, um, they have the have the option to take it through RVS, which is good access for them. Um, and just and just to clarify, this is uh, the course fulfills an elective that's requirement right. and not 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 the the bare bones requirement. If you That's know. right, because it's not a ministry, a right. curricular core course, it, it, it for the elective range. Yeah. Okay, no, no I, I thank, thank you for the clarification there. And, um, you know, I, I, I will be supporting uh, the recommendation just because, um, you know, we're creating education, educational opportunities in the social sciences. Um, and in, in this day and age where, you know, there's a lot of divisiveness in, in our society, it's uh, more than ever, we ever have those it. conversations, um, and 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 to deepen learning about each each other. I think this um, course really achieves that, um, and I believe that um, it all, it also gives a taste for our students what secondary academics mm -hmm. look like. Because you know, once you get to that level, level there are a lot of course offerings that are similar to the BAA course uh, presented in front of us. So I think that's it's a good stepping stone. But much gar or our programs uh, that are happening in our in our in our school um 
I also love that the course takes, takes the perspectives of the, the indigenous people through the lens, the FPPL, which is mm -hmm. uh, another step, step in work towards uh, truth, truth and regulation. Um, and, and um, lastly, I just want to say that, um, you know, in this, this journey of diversity, I feel, I, I strongly believe that it's all about all ships rising together. And um, it's, you know, we're talking about, you know, yes, and, um, and, and, you know, I, I know there, there's voices that uh, will say yes, yes, but, or worse yet, but no. Um, but I, I just think that, um, you know, in, in the spirit of uh, achieving true diversity and, and meaningful diversity, um, this is the step that, that we have to take. We need to incur, incur um, uh, all marginalized group and lift all uh, marginalized group in this, this journey and um, together we succeed. So I will be supporting this recommendation. Thank you. So Trustee Yang, I'm wondering then if you would like to, to really move the motion for the record. I can, I'll, I'm, I'm happy to move it. And I, I uh, seconded by Trust, Trustee Sarge. Are you want, wanting to make a comment? And I was just going to read the re recommendation. Are you, are you seconding? Okay. Um, that the Board of Education Division to be attached newly developed board authority author authorized BA course, African and Black Canadian Studies 12 implementation implementation in the 2023-2024 school year. And Trustee Sergeant, did, did you have a comment? No, no. Are, are there any other comments from trustees? Um, I just wanted to say. I'm so, so in favor of this course. Uh, you know, um, we have, we have to rich um, uh, history with our uh, Black and Caribbean and African um, peoples, and uh, but enough enough is about it. And we even have, uh, I believe it was, was Dees or Dees Island was named after a Black uh, Canadian a businessman. And and just there's just not enough known about it, their contributions to Canada, and I think it's going to be an amazing course. I would love to have had this on when I was in school, school, and I'd like to take one now. So um, you can think about that uh, for continuing education. But but um, I really, really think it's a very important important step, and and really appreciate the um, team that, that put the course together. And um, do you think, you know, know that there, there's, there's lots more that, more that can be learned about other, other communities and contributions to, to Canada too. too. And um, I, I believe, Trustee Belize, is that your hand up, up or is that from time? And you're, you're on mute though. You'll have to unmute yourself. Trusty Belize. Uh, I think they think this uh, motion will be one step in the right direction. Right direction. And and it should not be limited only to the school to the, as a subject or as a course, or as a course. But, but to the whole community and even in our school district. In terms in of employment, employment and in terms of community com participation and engagement. So I think uh, we need to make sure that this is just the beginning of so many uh, sectors in our society who are marginalized by the same way the same as, way as, as this, this people. And uh, I'm glad that uh, we start. We are starting to initiate some kind of courses that would address this kind of problem that we have in our society and in our and in our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Belize. Belize. So if there's no more com comments or questions, I'm then going to actually call the question. So uh, all those in favor, that's great. Thank you, and I, I see no opposition. So um, thank you, it's approved, and thankfully.
And, th and thank you very much for the presentation. And I'm staying for the next one, I think, to do so. And uh, next, next on the end is another course that um, the Indness graduation requirement course, and we're just receiving a report. Uh, uh, Superintendent Millen again, again, hot seat. I have to say, whenever I'm speaking, I'm speaking on behalf of a huge, huge department yes. across this district. I just happen to be the one at the table, but there's a, a lot of hard work by, by a number of folks behind the scenes. I also wanted to provide, provide some information regarding district's implementation plan for the Ministry of Education and Child Health Care Genus Focus graduate requirement, which will come into effect uh, for the 2023 to 2024 school year. Uh, again, looking to the, the board strategic plan, plan, there's many connections here. Priority one, one inspired learners uh, goal, within goal, goal three, that Indigenous pe people's history, perspectives, and learning approaches are embedded in embedded district planning and, and practices, and the, and the objectives within that, that, and certainly within equity and inclusion, in both goal one and, and goal two. And so, as you're aware, the BC Ministry of Ed Education and Child Care is areas of Indigenous focus with requirement for all secondary students beginning in the T23 to 24 school school year. The implementation of graduation requirement was one of the action items the province's de declaration on the rights of Indigenous Indigenous Act, which is the framework for rec reconciliation in BC. Um, it is also aligned with, with and uh, the action plan was developed in consult, consultation cooperation with Indigenous peoples to achieve, achieve the objectives of the UN Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous people, Peoples, ourselves in BC. So the, the requirement itself in, involves secondary students, students completing four credits, which, which is generally taking a one-year course of Indigenous focus, focused coursework in order to graduate. Wait. And the requirement may complete from grades 10 through grade 12. 12. And the different options that were presented from the ministry um, um, that could be one or more of a variety of provincially developed courses, um, which is the ministry core, core courses where we have landed uh, through a first, a first nation's language, language course and or, or through a locally developed, like the one that was just approved, uh, Indigenous focused EAA course that would meet specific criteria. criteria. So in looking, looking at the pathway forward as, as it brings to implement, implementing this requirement, including specific course determinations, initial draft, drafts developed in fall and a rationale and shared with multiple state, stakeholders. Feedback was solicited from many, many state stakeholder groups, including Musk, Musk, William Person, the, Le the Learning Services Indigenous Success Team, second secondary administrators, second teachers, the Richmond Teachers Association, and the Education Implementation Committee, as well as our district, district leadership staff. And staff also consulted and were given guidance um, through the ministry's Indigenous Focused Graduation Requirement Implementation Handbook, which was published in early fall. Based on the feedback and the perspectives of, of all of the different stakeholder groups, what we determined is to offer English First People 12 and BC First Peoples 12 offer the 2023-3 tour school year in all second secondary school consistent implementation across all of our sites, um, as well as our secondary alternate sites and Richmond, Richmond Virtual School. Schools also have and have always actually had the option offering English First Peoples 10, which in that case you have, there are four sub course courses of each two credits. So schools would choose two of the four options that would make the one four credit course. And I do will mention that these courses are not brand new. They've always been part of um, within our current curriculum. They have part of the current curriculum. This is the focus implementation. So English, English Peoples 10, BC, BC First P12, and, and English First Peoples 12 do meet required graduation courses while allowing students to maintain the length of elective courses. For example, English First Peoples, Peoples 12 meets your, your English 12 requirement. So students may choose, choose, choose that as their uh, grade 12 English. They could continue to take English 12, 12 well or, or have a choice of either. Of either. And similarly, the, the um, BCC first P12 course meets the social studies requirements for graduation. So implementation a set of the two grade grade 12 courses will be consistent for the next two years because we want to have that time to grow and build understanding and implementation. 
And that that time after two years, we would consider we'd be reviewing where we're at and consider expansion, alternate options. But we re- really want want to build consistent, okay. successful implementation and really channel our supports in some really really folk folk ways um, um, to support our educators. Implementation support includes learning services staff, staff as our T consultants for genetic success. Quidian inclusion and our DRC coordinator who have already begun working collaboratively, collaborative, let's, let's see the night, collaboratively to support teachers and working on a plan that will start as of Jan- January. Those who have expressed interest in teaching these in these courses start building capacity here to next fall. Funding has been set aside for the purchase of resources to support the implementation and that will be distributed to secondary schools to guide their purchasing. Additional funds for prof- professional to support release time and other co- costs will all be utilized this year. With additional funding, support needs to be considered for 2020-2024 annual fund budget. We've also spoken with human resources and have established that there will, will be no minimal, minimum, minimum enrollment requirement courses. So this is a really, really exciting, we're really quite thrilled with this and a unique op- opportunity to de- demonstrate in part our, our shared commitment to reconciliation um, and for BC student, students to have an opportunity to develop deeper understanding the experiences, cultures and histories of Indigenous peoples in Canada. And we're really excited to be moving forward with our course office option next fall. Trustee Sergeant. Just want to reflect for a minute. I'm thinking about uh, my time at the K to 12 collaborate table. Provincial, provincially, Debbie Jeff Jeffries is on my mind right now, now where she talked about, about this. And it was many year, years ago that the whole open the dreams of finesse was that, you know, one day this would be a requirement. People had so many questions and concerns. And then people started to learn and understand and and, and really take in what Finesse was really trying to say. Um, and, and to say this is a much deeper um, action than um, just a course. And, you know, a future for us is with our children. And children will learn like, like didn't. And um, so I'm thinking of all the work that the provincial partners, all of them sat at that table and uh, our provincial association, BCSTA, took a stand on advocacy uh, around this requirement. And so I'm really, really proud and in my own district, the staff are talk, talking, making this has come to life. And so I just think it's gonna, it's, it's moved the dial for young people moving forward that everyone must know, know what happened. And um, so, Anyway, anyways, thank you very much. And I look forward to hearing the great discussions that come from this. Thank I'm you. Ready to get started. Yeah. Are there any other questions, comments? Uh, I don't see it. Thank you. Okay, Trustee Bolli, do you have? Yes, I. Sorry, I, I lost. Going up and down, uh, down. Yeah, there's something wrong uh, with my uh, signal here. I but think anyway, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Trustee Belisa? Yes. Do you have can a you hear comment? me? Yes. Uh, Trustee I, Belisa, I believe you're muted. Oh, and we have we have no snow. There no. No, so, I didn't. I didn't. I think we'll have have to leave any com- comments, Trustee Belisa. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah, some. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Okay. Sorry. Uh, uh, I guess I, uh, uh, much has been mentioned of the different stakeholders being asked. Have we considered students as primary stakeholder? Have we asked them? for some kind of an input with regard to this subject. And uh, second comment would be, uh, you know, this is part of the uh, equity and uh, inclusion priorities. But is this subject, would it also try to inspire the learners' concerns? 
And would this improve because you're being discussing, I think, in the previous in the years, previous we have a problem with problem the graduation, graduation rate, rate uh, of the, 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 uh, the indigenous members of our community. Of our school. Would this improve this the graduation rate or the student achievement? achievement. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So certainly with regards to equity and action project, Indigenous learners identified in a variety of ways the importance and the value they feel in their culture is reflected in their learning. And certainly they, that, that spoke to what they see in their classrooms, what they see on walls, and certainly they're learning about. And um, this being a huge step forward in that there's a focused course which it, it very honors Indigenous pers perspectives for all of us to learn and for Indigenous learners to see themselves and their culture reflected very direct ways um, in their learning. So to speak to that, to that piece, I believe. Thank you, Tr Trustee Bullseye. I was going to see uh, myself that, you know, I, I'm really excited about this course. course. And, and I do think it will affect the, the graduation rate rates across province because it's ministry uh, mandated and recommended, and our first peoples, those in our and the students, students have not seen themselves reflected for such, such a long time, and they are, be, are beginning and will see more um, reflection on their ways of life and their contribution to Canadian history and. And that is, is really, really very, very important. So I'm so, so glad to see this. And I just had one quick question. Did we receive, like, the, the, the ministry mandated this course? Have they pro provided any direct directing to boards? I don't recall um, for resources or anything, uh, to training, anything like, like that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I defer to Secretary Treasurer Wang. Oh, sure. Um, yeah, through chairperson, I'd be happy to answer that question. So, um, the ministry has not, not provided direct funding for the uh, graduation recommend. However, however, from the ministry's perspective, they have provided uh, funding on First Nations support courses. So, and also, um, uh, this year, the reason uh, we have have the uh, resources available is set aside resources to um, to support supports in the group this year. And uh, that, that's really thanking to to enrollment girls. So we do the resources currently in our budget to support the initiative. So it's good for us to be thankful that that we have that I'd yeah, yeah. money for the resources the ministry has has anyway. Um, anyway, thank you very very much. I think this is here for um, information for approval. But yes. thank you very much for for seeing and mentioning. And we did we were receiving quite a bit of information and as all at our trust trustee academy that trustees went through about a couple of weeks ago. Okay, are there um look looking there's another uh point where we have questions question from uh public on, on tense agenda and uh chair chairperson, there are a uh, question question at this point. Thank you, thank you. And Ms. Ms. Bavers does, I thought you were leaving the room for a minute, so. Um, I don't think I'm seeing any questions from the public. Trust us, you want to. So, uh, regarding the indigenous situation uh, requirements, so um, I say to, to thank uh, the RTA presidents, uh, how to write, write a letter to Ministry of Education to help to and uh, get the uh, budget of the the fund or for uh, for the fund funding. Yeah, thank thank you very much. Um, okay, we'll move on, move on to standing reports. Uh, audit committee. Uh, our, our chair is uh, Trustee Yang. Chairperson, then I have nothing to work. Okay. And Ed Hink, Ed Education Committee, uh, Trustee Larson is the chair. I, I have a report, but, but our next meeting will be Wednesday, January, January the 18th at 6 p.m. Okay. And Trustee Yang, did you have meetings set up? 
Yes, the next meeting, I believe it's January, January 24th at, at 3. Okay. We'll send in here. Thanks. Um, facility and building, uh, Trustee Hamaguchi. Yeah, the next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, January 4th at 4.30. I will be canvassing <clears throat> committee, committee members whether we're going to go uh, virtual, virtual or in person. Okay. Get back to it. And finance and legal committee chair, uh, Trustee Sergeant. Thank, thank you. Our next meeting is January 18th at TM. Okay. And policy committee uh, is mine. And um, a meeting held on Monday, December 12th. <clears throat> and the next meeting is scheduled for Monday, January 6th, 6th at 11 a.m. And we have uh, no correspondence. It's um, a board committee and round of report reports council liaison. Um, the next um, meeting date is scheduled for Wednesday, January 11th. And, and I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Uh, Trustee Yang, Yang and Trustee Monk. Thank, thank you. All in favor? I'm sure. Thank you. Just wanted to wish everybody a very, very, very happy um, holiday season and um, hoping it's all uh, safe and, and enjoyable with lots of good food and fun and friendship and um, appreciation for being able to be together again. Thank you very much. Happy New Year to you.